Hey guys, in this video, I want to discuss Pro Tools shortcuts. I want to thank uh, Russ from the Air Users blog. He gave me the idea after looking at his site. He posted a couple of uh, shortcuts, kind of inspired me to do this. Pro Tools is an application that has a lot of shortcuts and it's impossible for me to cover every single uh, shortcut. There's so many. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how I work in Pro Tools and some of the shortcuts that I use in Pro Tools. But if you wanna read and you wanna get into the whole uh, shortcut, you could go to help, you could go to Pro Tools shortcuts, make sure you have a PDF reader like Adobe Reader or an alternative and check it out. There's so many things here. Now there are a couple of shortcuts out there that are only for Pro Tools HD, like this for example, shuffle mode using numeric key, Pro Tools HD only. If you have Pro Tools 9, you can upgrade to the complete uh, toolkit and then you'll be able to use some of those shortcuts. Now the first thing I do when I get a track, I open the session, I look at the session, I see what needs to be done. Before I do anything, I make sure keyboard focus is enabled. And at this point it is enabled. There's been times where it's disabled, so we have to enable it. Keyboard focus is very important. It helps you out with a lot of the shortcuts. Now the first thing I wanna do, if I'm gonna start mixing this, uh, this session here, I need to import my uh, my templates. In order to do that in Pro Tools, is Shift Alt I. It's gonna bring the choose a file to import session data. I'm gonna choose my templates. As you can see, I have a couple. They're all revisioned. Every single one has something different. I'm gonna import seven. I'm gonna add everything here that I need. Okay. Now I'm not really going through all of that because this video is more on the shortcuts. Check it out. Now I have all my effects, so I'm ready to start mixing. Now that I'm in the mixer window, what I want to do, I want to send all these tracks to this print bus, and I'm going to show you how to do that. There's two ways to do this. You could do it, you could do track by track. For example, you will go to your output, you will go to your bus, new master, and then you do the next one, and you keep doing them like that. But you know what? That's the long way. So what we're going to do, we're going to click one of the audio tracks, hold down shift, and then go to the first track. And as you can see, they all highlighted now. And now what I want you to do is shift alt and look for your new uh, output and check it out. It automatically switched all the tracks that were highlighted to this new output. How awesome is that? Now what I need to do on this print track, I need to make it solo safe. So by holding down control, click the S, and as you can see now, it grayed out Remember, everything's routed to this uh, channel. This is kind of my new master now. If this wasn't solo safe, if I hit solo, then I'm gonna have a problem. I'm not gonna be able to hear it. So I will constantly have to solo this and another track. So for that, you solo safe it, and now you can solo whatever you want and really don't have to worry about that track. And you can solo multiple tracks together as well. So I could grab this track and this track and shift alt, click the S, and there you go. And I could do the same with the mute, with record. Now, as you can see, we have all our faders down. I usually like to start a mix like that. I have a control surface, so I'll just start bringing up, as you can see. But if you wanna just take all the faders and just put them at Unity, you could do that as well. You highlight all the tracks like I showed you. You're gonna click the track. You're gonna hold down Shift, select all of them. Then you're gonna hold down Shift and Alt and click the track and all the tracks will go up. So that's pretty cool. Now to bring the tracks back down, I really don't know if the shortcut for that. If there is one, please let me know what I do. I go over here to the group, I select all, and I'll just bring them all down. So that's usually how I do it. So let me take my master and print. Let me put them back at Unity. Let's go back to, uh, to the mixer window. And now I want to explain to you why the keyboard focus is very important. Now one command that I constantly use while I'm mixing is the R and T. The T is for zoom in and the R is to zoom out. So if I press the R and the T right now, nothing's happening. But if I press the start key on the keyboard and the T or the R, guess what? Now it's working. If you turn on the keyboard focus, you no longer need to hold that uh, start key. So now you can just press the T and the R. Now another cool trick, now you see I'm here at the end of the session. If you hit enter, it's gonna take you right back to the beginning of the session. So you could just start and play the session back from the beginning. So no matter where you at. So you could be right here and hit enter. It's gonna return you right back to the beginning. That's another shortcut that uh, is pretty neat. 
let's talk about some of my zoom shortcuts. Now let me make this a little bigger for you guys. And there's a shortcut for that too. And that would be start key, the up and down arrows on your keyboard. Let me check it out. Pretty cool. So let's leave it like that. Now you have the F5 key, which will bring this little uh, zoom tool. And it's pretty useful. Check it out. Nice. And I will hit the R key to zoom out. You know, not all the time I use the shortcuts. I'm just showing you the shortcuts. So what I'm going to do, make these two tracks just about equal size. And I want to zoom in. These are the alibs. As you can see, they're not really in sync. And that's one problem that I had with this session. So I had to sit down and kind of fix all of that because it just didn't sound right. What I like to do is I like to uh, scroll through the whole entire track and look at the WAV files and see what needs to be fixed. So I'm gonna start from the beginning, hit the space bar. By the way, you guys are not really gonna hear anything. This is just for the tutorial. See, nothing is going on. But if you hit the down arrow and the right arrow, you catch up. So that's the way I like to uh, scroll. So while it's playing, I'm just looking at the files and right here, there's nothing there, so I'm gonna zoom out. Try to go in as close as I can. Another cool shortcut is the tab key. Tap the transient right in the front of that. Hit the space bar. And I'm just looking to see what he's fixing. Sweet. So let's go back to the beginning. I noticed that uh, this is way off, so we have to fix that. I'm going to show you guys how I uh, deal with this. So I want to get rid of all this empty space here. It's really not important. There is two ways to get rid of that. You can hit the A key. Gone. Let's undo that. You could hit the B key. It'll separate. And you could delete. But the best way is to, uh, the best way is to zoom in. Tap to transient. Make sure you're really not cutting anything out. The A key. Everything's gone. Let's get rid of that and maybe put a little fade on it. And now we need to uh, fix this. And so by pressing the B key, I was able to separate this and now could kind of match this up. And that's by using the F5 key that using me zooming in like this. B key, then I could kind of line that up like that and play around with it until I get it, you know, really uh, perfect. Now, once I'm done, as you can see, I did a lot of cutting here. So you want to put fades through it. One thing I do, I'll just highlight the whole entire track and I'll press the F key. And as you can see, it automatically gave it some fades and you wouldn't hear any pop or clicks or anything like that. Now, another thing that I like to get rid of as you can see, this track was consolidated when it was given to me. Now, if you have 30, 40 tracks and they're all consolidated, the hard drive really doesn't know if it's consolidated, if it's audio there. It, it thinks it's audio and it's really putting a load on your drive. So what I like to do, I like to get rid of all of that. Control U is going to bring up uh, strip silence. Make sure it's not cutting anything at all. And strip. Press F, I'll give it those fades. Sweet. Let me double check that it created the fades. Nice. And I'm gonna do the same for the other track. Strip. Just do the same there. Get rid of this. I'm just bear with me guys. I'm just trying to organize this for, for you guys can see it as well. And I want to put some fades here as well. So hit the F key, create the fades, get rid of this. Now, another thing I like to do, I like to use Windows configuration to get rid of all of this. Sometimes when you're mixing, you want to have enough space. You know, some people use two monitors for that reason. They have so much going on in the session. You have your inserts, you have your IOs, your instruments. And at the end of the day, it could end up looking like this. And look, you're kind of screwed here. That's really uncomfortable there to work with that little bit of space. So I'm going to show you guys 
Windows configuration. So I'm going to get rid of everything. Now we have our space. I'm going to go ahead and go to Windows, Configurations. There's a shortcut for this as well, which is Control-Alt-J. So let's try that. Control-Alt-J. It's going to bring up the Windows configuration. And let's take a snapshot of this. So I'm go here, New Configuration. I'm going to call it Windows 1. Now I'm going to open the inserts. New Configuration. Windows 2. Now you could call it by its proper name. I'm just using this for the tutorial. And now one thing I like to do, let's go to uh, the mixer window. Let me get rid of the analog channel by MIG DSP. I wanna put the new uh, MPX uh, plugin here. Close that. Well, actually I wanna open it and I wanna take a snapshot of that. Let me see, let me leave it right there. And let's create a Windows configuration for that. New configuration. Let's call it uh, MPX. If you're not familiar with Windows configuration, check it out. If I go to one, gets rid of everything. If I go to two, it gives me my inserts. If I go to three, it opens the MPX plugin. Sweet. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, the Windows configuration window itself is taking up space here. So let's get rid of that. There's shortcuts for that too. So if I want to get rid of the inserts and go to uh, configuration one, it would be period one asterisk. If I want to see the MPX plugin, period three asterisk. And the MPX uh, plugin's there. Now this is very useful because sometimes I want to look at the plugin that's on my master bus. I want to look at the meters and make sure I'm not hitting the plugins too hard. And the Windows configuration allows me to recall these plugins anytime. Now that's pretty awesome. So let's get rid of this and let's go back to our, and let's go back to Windows configuration one. Now the other shortcut that uh, I believe everybody should know is control S. Let's take a look. What is control S? Save. Very important. Although in Pro Tools it has the auto backup, but you know what? You never want to just rely on one thing. Just use the save. Always um, give revisions to your session. As you can see, this is a uh, mix seven, and that's the way I like to uh, organize my sessions. I really don't like something now. I could just always go back to that. So let's say I'm not happy with uh, this session. What I want to do is I don't want to overwrite this. Let's save as, and let's call it uh, YT for YouTube. Let's save it. So now it's uh, mix YouTube temp. So I'm not happy with this session, and I want to close it. Control Shift W. I don't want to save it, closed. If I want to reopen the session, Control Shift O is going to open the recent sessions or the most recent one. You can't choose whatever's the last one. That's what's going to open. Let's go back to the mixer window. Now, another pretty cool uh, shortcut has to do with the plugins. Let's say I wanted to open this Waves DS or on all these tracks. So, what we're going to do, we're going to Hold down shift like I showed you earlier. Select all the tracks. Shift and alt. And, well, actually I opened the uh, Renaissance compressor by wave, but it doesn't matter. It still shows you the same uh, function. But you know what? Let's open that deesser as well. And now I have the deesser open on all the tracks. Now let's say I'm really happy with the setting. I love the way it sounds. I just want to copy it to a couple of other vocals. There is two ways you could do it. You could save a template, save setting as, type the name of your, your template, and then you go to the other one and you just open it. For example, I have a template that's named Temp111 that I created for this video, so I could go to the other DSer and I could just load that uh, template and I'm good to go. But Let's say you really don't want to save the template. Here's what you could do. You could open the plugin, Control Shift C, go to the plugin where you want to match the exact configuration, and Control Shift V, and it's going to paste the settings. And you don't have to save any of the presets or whatever. You don't have to deal with none of that. So let's just get rid of everything here. And I just want to show you guys it works the same way with anything. Have a preset call up in your face. So let's copy. And let's go here, 
paste it as you can see it works exactly the same way all right guys so that's some of the shortcuts that i use when i'm mixing i'm pretty sure i forgot some but if you like the video give me a thumbs up and press that subscribe button and don't forget to comment in the bottom below later guys